We've all wanted to go back in time and give ourselves advice. Well, today I'm here to go back in time and give my newbie beginner crocheting self some advice that I've learned after several years of crocheting. Welcome to another episode of Slow Cozy Crochet, a podcast from Shannon Talks Yarn. I'm Shannon, and I would love to talk yarn with you. I really like this format of video because I had tried some crochet in chats, which I really enjoyed, but sometimes it was hard for me to keep my train of thought and count my stitches. And to me, this is the best of both worlds. I can sit and crochet and I can also have a serious conversation about some yarn. So like I said, We've all wanted to give ourselves advice, and this isn't going to be dramatic as not to date a person or don't take a certain job or make sure you get somewhere on time. This is much more relaxed, but I found as I have been crocheting over the years, my attitudes about certain things have changed. Things that I thought were important really weren't, or vice versa. Things I didn't think were important turns out they actually were. And I was an adult when I started crocheting. I was around 40 years old, and I'm a little bit closer to 50 now. But I think that gives me a good perspective on some of the things I've learned where, you know, if you are one of the lucky people who learned to crochet when they were very young, and now you're middle-aged like me, you know, you, you've you obviously learned a lot of things in that time frame. where I think since I've learned in a shorter time frame and have that perspective of being a grown woman the whole time, I think I've got um, some advice that I can give beginner crocheters that might be helpful. Today I am crocheting with Drops Paris 100% cotton yarn. And I recently hauled this Drops yarn. It was kind of a fun, uh, I would say reward splurge for me. I had wanted to try this yarn for a while, and I did an unboxing video on it, which was pretty fun. And that was honestly not too long ago. So I will have all that information for you. The yarn I'm working with here, um, these are 50 gram balls. And it has uh, 82 yards in each ball. And it is 100% cotton. And when I did the haul, I was looking for the country of origin. Um, which I could not find on the label, but after I started working with it and took the ball band off, it does say on the inside that it says uh, drops design, and I can I have no idea how to pronounce this street name, but then it says Oslo, Norway. So um, that did confirm I my suspicions that this was. Um, from Norway Yarn. It does say product of the, uh, or it says made in the EU, uh, European Union. So far, this yarn has been a pleasure to work with. In my unboxing, my first impression is that out of all the yarns I bought, it had the texture, the most, or the construction of normal, everyday, workhorse type of cotton I was used to, uh, but it definitely felt softer. I could feel that immediately. But as I've been working through this, I've been through one 50 gram skein so far, and I'm almost through with my second one. And I can say it has been a pleasure so far. It's so much softer. It, for you know, for not being a premium cotton, just being 100% cotton. Um, it's very soft to work with. And I was a little concerned it would be splitty, but uh, so far, I would say I'm about a quarter to a third of the way through this scarf, and um, it's only had two small areas where I've had a little bit of a split, so I don't think that's too bad at all. The first thing I would tell myself, my younger crochet self, is that it can be boring in the beginning and not to be discouraged by that. I was very fortunate to have a friend who'd been crocheting a long time and she really took me under her wing and uh, brought me some yarn. 
she brought me a hook she brought me a pattern of it was like a simple dishcloth and um I didn't have to go out and buy any of that so it, it was very nice of her and she just brought me some scrap balls to work with and it was perfect um, because I didn't go and get confused or anything by all the options that are out there. But, um, I guess that's the big thing. I, once she taught me, you know, like chain and the single crochet and the double crochet, she was like, okay, work on this for a while. And when you get that figured out, you know, we'll work on the next step. And that's exactly what I needed. It really was. But, it was something where, you know, I didn't get like that uh, dopamine fix in my brain um, and, and I didn't get that like sense of satisfaction, which is totally fine. Generally speaking, that's how it is when you're learning anything. You're not a gigantic success immediately. Go figure, right? But it it's one thing where, um, especially if you... Um, you know, want to see results right away, you know, this is a time where you do have to be slow about it. And you have to take your time learning those steps and focus on the moment and not get distracted thinking about the other things you wish you could do and other projects because it will, um, number one, lead to disappointment if you try to skip those steps and jump ahead into a project you're not ready for. But it will also take away from that time of learning and why cheat yourself of that time if you don't have to. The second thing I would tell my younger crochet self is to be mindful in the beginning of what projects you pick. I really don't recommend starting out with a big blanket project or something with a lot of color changes and other things that slow you down. I would really recommend actually starting out with a, sm a few smaller projects so you do get that sense of satisfaction. And while, you know, a uh, dishcloth or scrubbies, you know, might not be uh, as impressive to you or a uh, biggest sense of accomplishment as something big, you can stack up these smaller projects. And as you're doing that, you're building more skills and you're perfecting your stitches and it prepares you to be able to tackle a larger project that if you just jumped right into, you might end up getting overwhelmed and frustrated and quitting altogether. The third tip for my younger crochet self would be to stay away from those beautiful novelty yarns. <laughs> this is something I struggle with. I am so attracted to novelty yarns. You know, they're very dramatic and sometimes they're very soft. And, you know, I absolutely love something um, with a huge halo or, you know, just very cushy or those gigantic chain yarns. I love them all. I really do. And I find myself still purchasing some and not knowing what to do with it. But in the beginning, I've said it before, I 100% recommend you march yourself <laughs> to the Red Art Super Saver aisle and start there because they have got tons and uh, there's a color for everyone. I mean, I honestly, my friend Erica at It's Time for Yarn just had a video out where she rated some of her, I believe it was her top five value yarns. And I can't even remember how many Super Saver varieties she said there was, but I think it was in the hundreds between the solids, the tweeds, the ombres, the stripes, um, the, the variegated there is a Red Heart Super Saver for everyone's taste there. And while it isn't soft by any means, it is super durable. If you need to frog that a hundred times, and if you're new and don't know the term frogging, it means ripping it all out and starting over. If you need to frog it a hundred times, it will hold up to that. So that's where I would say to start out if you're going to buy yarn for yourself. 
It is an easy weight yarn to work with. I believe the recommended hook size is either a five or a five and a half millimeter crochet hook. So it's very versatile. You'll be able to reuse that hook with a ton of different projects without having to buy another size. And it's just a workhorse. So save those beautiful novelty yarns till you get a little more experience and can pick out a great pattern that will suit those yarns. The next tip for my younger crochet self really goes hand in hand with the last one. And I was in such a hurry to build up my yarn stash because if you've been around, you know I love a bargain. I don't like having to pay full price. So I would jump into sales so I could have this yarn stash and be able to choose from that. And I made some somewhat silly choices, some very unpractical choices because something was cheap. And as I touched on the novelty yarns, the other issue that I ran into when I was in such a rush to build my yarn stash was that the reason I was able to get some of these yarns for such a crazy low price is because they were discontinued and they'd be unavailable in the future. So I guess this is kind of a two-part tip. If you're buying a discontinued yarn, <laughs> either don't buy it if you don't know what you want to do with it because you won't be able to get more, or make sure you buy enough of it that you can complete a project. And when you're new to crochet, it can be hard to estimate how much you would need to do a project or even what type of project that yarn would be suited for. So I know I had gotten a few yarns off the Joanne app and sent to me where they were pretty cool, but I didn't have a project in mind. And since I was new, I didn't realize there really wasn't enough yarn in each of these skeins to really like even make a hat out of. So I'm going to have to pair these with something else and, you know, hunt down something. And it's been quite a few years and I still haven't actually done that yet. So be mindful don't jump into the sales and just buy something attractive that you like because it's cheap <laughs> because you may end up in trouble or make sure you take a realistic look at it as far as what type of yarn it is and what type of project you could use it for and make sure you get enough of it, you know, make sure there's enough to do a hat or if you're thinking blanket, you're going to need a lot of it. So be mindful and maybe don't jump headfirst into all those clearance sales. The fifth tip I have is for when you are ready to start a larger project, and I'm going to go with a blanket for my example here, is to pick a project in a style that is easier for beginners. And I think one of the absolute best blankets to start out for when you're new to crochet is a granny to infinity where you're basically making a granny square, but you just keep going. Like it's not a six inch granny. It's not a 12 inch granny. It is as big as the blanket gets. And the reason that I think this is the perfect project for a beginner is because your the counting you need to do is minimal in this project. So if, like I said, when you're new, it can sometimes be difficult. And I, I know counting <laughs> shouldn't be difficult, but it is sometimes hard to pay attention. So um, don't be hard on yourself for that because that still gets me the focus. But you, with this project, you're just making this granny square grow larger each and every time. So the main value to this technique is that you don't have that pressure of making sure that you get not only your tension equal in the whole project, which 
is pretty hard when you're when you're new to crochet and if you are you know holding on for dear life <laughs> like I did in the beginning I was a very very tight crocheter you know you start out that way and as you get going in the project this blanket is going to get larger and larger at the top even if you have the right amount of stitches because as you go your tension relaxes a little bit or it could be vice versa too. So that is the number one big value. But the other value is that you're only counting these clusters of three and you just go around your rows each and every time. So you don't have to stress and worry about making sure you get that right amount of stitches in your blanket. I mean, your chain could be 150 or 200 chains across to make a blanket it could even be more depending on the size of your blanket and that's something where even using stitch markers to mark your your increments as you go along it is still easy to be off by one or two and the issue is is that that just being off one on a row can end up becoming a domino effect and your blanket again ends up larger or smaller as you go along and you see it changing sizes and it could also um, then cause you to have to frog back several rows and that is disappointing so look into doing a granny to infinity blanket for your first project and just alleviate some of that extra pressure and stresses and start with something that is super beginner friendly. The sixth and seventh tips that I would give my younger crochet self definitely go together. So I want to talk about gift giving. <laughs> And this is something where there are a few issues involved. Number one, people who aren't into yarn and crochet don't know how much you've spent on yarn. They don't understand the differences in yarn quality. And they also don't understand your time and your effort, how much actually goes into it. So is something where you need to know not to be hurt if you give a gift and that person doesn't appear to value it as much as you wanted them to. And I know that's easier said than done, but a lot of it really is that the people, you, your loved ones, if they're not a yarny person, they really probably have no idea what went into that piece. And the second part of this sixth tip is that <laughs> your friends and family can also get tired of receiving gifts. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but I wanted to make so many projects and try so many new techniques that I was learning. And I did do a lot of smaller projects and I... I did give a lot to like my daughter, for example, and she's always so gracious and so grateful and thankful and kind and encouraging when I give her projects. But I know that <laughs> she doesn't really need all of them. And, uh, you know, how many hats can a person have and how many this and that? And like I said, she is always so great when I give her things, but I know that probably deep down she's like, oh, great. <laughs> One more hat. You know, it, it's just that uh, not everyone wants near as much crochet as we do. And I think this connects to the seventh tip that I want to tell my younger crochet self and anyone else out there. And to be honest, this is something that I think is helpful to seasoned crocheters as well. And this seventh tip is that it's okay to crochet amazing things for yourself. You can buy that amazing special or expensive yarn 
and you can make yourself something that you love and you don't have to feel guilty about it. There is nothing in this world (laughs) that says that you can't enjoy the things you make. And I think a lot of us just love a lot and we like to, um, I don't know if it's a love language thing, but we like to create these things and share them and give them to the people that we care about. But as I stated, sometimes they get a little burnt out from our gifts and and it is okay. It is totally okay to make yourself something amazing. You don't need to feel guilty about that. You don't need to feel selfish. You work hard on this skill. You put your time and attention and your money to it and it is okay to guilt-free make yourself something. I do have a bonus eighth tip that I want to share with you. And this was something that I've never fallen into as a new crocheter, but I have had so many people mention this to me. But before I get into that, I do want to um, encourage you, if you haven't been to my blog yet, shannontalksyarn.com, I would love it if you would check that out. And it is still a work in progress. It's a whip, just like me. And I am in the process of uh, compiling and creating some great information for beginners that will be on this blog. So definitely keep checking back um, to check that out. But if you are listening to this and you are an experienced crocheter, I would love, love, love it if you would share some of your experience with the new crocheters. And down in the comments of this Um, podcast, please write down anything that you would tell your younger crochet self that you've learned since then, because I think this is a great opportunity for everyone to learn from each other. And there's probably a lot of tips out there that I don't know about and that you could really help someone by sharing. And this will be great because I'll have a spot on my blog where this will be linked. And so the new crocheters, after watching this video or listening to this podcast, can go down into the comments and read the tips that you've left for them and just share that experience you've learned. I sure would appreciate it. Here's my bonus eighth tip. And this never occurred to me, but when people find out I crochet, you know, in like my my day job, my real life, um, they will often say, oh, I have a big event coming up, uh, you know, birthday, Christmas, uh, whatever, girls' night, uh, reunion, and I want to make everybody finger-knitted blankets or, you know, whatever, or I want to make everyone matching hats. Um, You know, just a couple examples I've heard. And I would say, oh my gosh, I don't think that's a good idea. Um, It is just something where you are setting yourself up for so much pressure if you are new. And by trying to create multiple items or putting yourself on such a strict deadline to get it done for an event, I guarantee the process will not be pleasurable. It won't be something you enjoy. And you will start having negative association with it and disappointment in yourself if you don't get it done in time and and what could be even something that really wouldn't even be possible for an experienced crocheter to do in that time frame. It's just never a good idea as a newbie crocheter to start out with a big project on a time frame as a gift it's just not worth it. If you're really wanting to do something where you're doing gifts for the girls or something along that lines, pick a tiny project. Make everyone a cotton can cozy or a cotton coaster or maybe even a dishcloth, but make it realistic. 
If you have been enjoying these episodes of the Slow Cozy Crochet Podcast, I would encourage you to check out this playlist linked above and check out my prior episodes. And again, if you are an experienced crocheter who enjoyed this, please leave your advice down in the comments for those new crocheters. Thanks again for talking yarn with me. Bye, guys.